Driving the back roads. Do you like driving back roads or do you mainly stay on the main highways? We're talking about back roads on this episode of the Driving with Rob podcast. Nowadays, everybody has a GPS. When they first came out, you had to have a separate GPS device in your car. And some cars now come with GPS on them. But everybody has GPS on their smartphone. Well, in the good old days, you didn't have GPS. You had to know where you were going and you had to have a map if you were going someplace you'd never been before. But now GPS makes it so much easier. You just put in your destination, it'll tell you how to get there. Now you can set up your GPS to take you the shortest route or the fastest route. And the fastest route is not always the best route. We had to go to Salisbury, North Carolina, a few years ago. Well, the fastest route to Salisbury from where I live is I-85, Interstate 85. But this particular day, I knew that there was road construction between my house and Salisbury. And I just didn't feel like getting caught up in that road construction. Because the last time I had gone up I-85, they had me backed up on the interstate, bumper to bumper, three lanes wide, for about five miles. I said, we're not doing that today. Well, I found out on my GPS, you can also choose scenic route. And when you choose scenic, it usually takes you off the interstate and gives you directions that way. And you see, I always called it taking the back roads. GPS calls it the scenic route. And most men will never admit when they're lost. And with the GPS, you're never lost. And I am much more prone to stopping to ask directions than most men. Because I really have no pride when it comes to things like that. But of course, now that you have GPS, you don't need to ask directions. The GPS will tell you. But I found out I can put scenic route in my GPS. And scenic route ends up taking you down the back roads. And going down the back roads is a much more interesting trip than taking the major interstates. And I remember one time someone told me how to take back roads to Statesville rather than getting on I-77. And I-77 is a worse interstate through the Charlotte area than I-85 is. I-77 is a nightmare. And once I learned the back roads to Statesville, I said, I'll never get on I-77 to go to Statesville again. It took me 10 minutes longer, obviously, because I wasn't going 70 miles an hour. But it was so much more peaceful. It took me by farmhouses and pastures and forested areas, and there was very little traffic on this road. So, yeah, the back roads were the best way to go, for me, just to have a stress-free trip to work. And I remember one time, this company that I was working for sent me to Charlottesville, Virginia. It's not the other side of the world, but it's not right around the corner. Well, I decided that I was going to take the back roads, meaning that I wasn't going to be on the interstate. I was still on North Carolina Highway 150 for most of the way. But I wasn't on the interstate. And it was a great trip. I went through these little towns that I'd never heard of before. It took me longer. But it was a much more interesting trip. And when you take the back roads, you notice things. Like barns. And windmills. And you think about things like why someone used split rail fence instead of barbed wire. And why somebody decided to have a paved driveway instead of a gravel driveway. And when I was growing up, a lot of the roads in Lincoln County were dirt roads. All dirt roads are back roads, but not all back roads are dirt roads. And when I was 16 years old, gas was still 50 cents a gallon. And I was driving a car that got 30 miles to the gallon. I was driving a Volkswagen Beetle. So the most fun thing I could do on a Saturday was fill up my tank for $5 
and just drive around. Wonder where this rope goes. I wonder where this rope comes out. So my VW Beetle was constantly dirty. I had to wash it all the time because I always took the back roads. I always took the dirt roads because it was a lot more fun. And I asked my grandfather one time, I said, why are all these back roads and all these dirt roads so curvy? And there was this one particular road called Stagecoach Road. And it was a very, very curvy dirt road. And he told me that years ago, that actually was a stagecoach road. That a stagecoach used to actually have that as its regular route. And the reason the road was so curvy is because before the days of automobiles, it was very difficult for a horse-drawn wagon to pull a steep hill. So for the same reason that mountain roads are curvy, the road had to be curvy so the horse could switch back in a zigzag pattern to go up a hill because it couldn't pull straight up like an automobile could. And when I was 16 years old, I could tell you where every dirt road in Lincoln County came out. It starts here, it ends here. And I used to love taking the back roads. And these days, with life passing you by as fast as it does, it's nice to take a little extra time and take the back roads. And that's going to do it for this episode of the podcast. I appreciate you listening. Thanks for downloading. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye now.